I find myself doing another video on the Dimension 4700. Not a bad system from Dell. The system contains a Pentium 4 of some sort, and as far as I know, the systems are generally sold for home and small business use. If you watched the previous video on this computer, you'll know that it has 4GB of RAM, a 3GHz Pentium 4, and a GT710, and runs Windows 8 and XP Media Center Edition. Today we're going to be upgrading it to the highest clocked single core CPU made by Intel. This Pentium 4 670 runs at 3.8 GHz and has 2 MB of level 2 cache. It consumes a lot of power and is basically one of the factors why Intel started moving away from the netburst architecture. Opening up the computer, the first thing you generally notice is the huge heatsink, which will be necessary for this CPU. This CPU is actually the newer SL8 stepping, which runs at a slightly lower voltage and thus consumes less power than the SL7, which I have dealt with before. But that doesn't mean that this large baffle and very generously sized fan aren't necessary. And you also need a good power delivery system, which we do have here. Whether you consider this a good thing or a bad thing, the heatsink and the processor are completely removable without any tools. The chipset is an Intel 915, and as such, we're limited to Pentium 4s and not anything dual core such as Pentium D or Core 2 Duo, unfortunately. For whatever reason, this copper on the bottom is sort of corroded looking, which doesn't really make sense, because the rest of the computer is fine, but the heatsink works anyway. And as you can see, ours has some old thermal paste and is a bit dusty. The old processor, a Pentium 4 630, was fairly common for the time and boasted reasonable performance for the time and didn't break the bank. Putting the new CPU into the Zero Insertion Force LGA775 socket is easy enough, as you know. And I'm just using some cheap TG7 thermal paste from the local Best Buy. It's not great, but it will work. Then you just easily put the CPU heatsink back on, although it does take a little bit of time to do so. With the computer all set up again, we'll boot into BIOS and make sure that the CPU works without exploding. And indeed it does, it is recognized and running at, at its full speed of 3.80 GHz. First, since you guys are so upset with me running Windows 8 on this thing, I'll boot up into Windows XP just to prove that it works. And actually, it does work a lot better than Windows 8 does. But, you know, XP is lacking a bit of modern software compatibility, especially in gaming, which I was doing the previous video on. But thanks to RoyTam1 with New Moon and Serpent Browsers, we do have a modern web browser at least. Thanks to the NVIDIA GT710, video decoding is a breeze. Since I did the rest of the testing bef in the previous video on Windows 8, we'll go ahead and compare using that operating system. As you can see, our performance score is went up from a 4.1 to a 4.5, and that's because the limiting factor is the processor, and I think that score is very generous considering we have a Pentium 4 running on Windows 8. I wasn't kidding when I said that this processor consumes a lot of power, because it produces a lot of heat and requires the fans to run very fast to compensate. Now temperatures aren't that crazy, but they're a lot higher than I'd like with some of the VRMs easily hitting 75 degrees Celsius. And in case you need a meter to tell you that this thing consumes a lot of power, it does. But it's not really a problem in terms of delivery of that power thanks to the 305 watt power supply. 
Now the main thing we looked at yesterday besides gaming was web browsing. And yeah, it can do that, but Firefox these days just isn't optimized for such old CPUs, I don't think. Twitter's usable, but it's slow and buggy as always, but that's really not because of the browser specifically, or the hardware. Discord on Firefox Quantum I've never really had a good experience with, and this is no exception, as it just keeps shoving me out of channels at random, as it likes to do on slow hardware. However, it is usable, and maybe even slightly better than it was before we upgraded the CPU. However, even though we're running a new operating system like Windows 8, Roytam 1's browsers like, such as Serpent or New Moon that are designed to run on Windows XP actually do work very well on low-end hardware, especially on newer operating systems as well. Discord is a lot smoother in Serpent. Well basically, would I recommend that you buy this CPU? No way. It has not actually a lot of performance gain, and it generally goes for like $50 on eBay, at least where I live. So it's not really worth it in any regard, unless you just want to have it to have it. Once again, thank you guys for watching my videos, and I just hit 69 subscribers, and as you know, that's a nice number.